Hi, welcome to another edition of North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and I have a very special guest in the studio with me today, Gloria Bouillon. Did I say that right? You did. The yes. French way. That is. And uh, Gloria is actually the new uh, airport manager at the Beverly Airport. Congratulations. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Well, you're welcome, and uh, we're going to uh, get our viewers all uh, uh, knowledgeable about airport uh, in Beverly and, and its operations and everything here through this program. Now, you are, tell us a little bit about your, your background. I, I know I was very impressed in reading your background. You're a commercial pilot, and et cetera, et cetera. You've, you've, you've done everything from, from uh, run the plow trucks to now you're an airport <laughs> manager. So t tell us about your background a little bit, Gloria. Um, sure. So I actually, I started in the industry pretty young. I could fly before I, I could drive. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was known at um, the airport I worked at when I um, was, I think, 16 years old as the airport rat. So just someone <laughs> who is always there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was able to, um, at a very young age, get a full, you know, start understanding the aviation industry and what other career paths were available other than just flying. Um, so I did, uh, I, 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 like I said, I do have my commercial um, pilot certificate and I've, I've added on some endorsements from there, but I, I actually changed into, into management. Um, and I, I also did training as an air traffic controller as well. So um, when I graduated, I started working in the aviation insurance industry, though I missed being on the actual airport. The, um, it's, it's, it's a really, I wouldn't say high stress environment, but it's more of a high stakes environment right. um, where there's, there's a, a lot going on every day and every day is really different. So yeah. I um, worked at Aspen Airport for quite a time in operations, snow removal, aircraft rescue firefighting, and uh, eventually worked my way into the administration and um, was able to get a, a really good knowledge on, on how to do public outreach with a lot of these capital projects, um, that there may be a diverse uh, viewpoint from, from residents well, and, yeah. and some community groups. Um, and I eventually went into consulting, so I prepared business plans, master plans, economic feasibility studies, statewide economic plans for um, various airports in mostly the western region. Um, one airport out, actually out in Massachusetts when, mm -hmm. I, was, when, I, when I was in Colorado. And mm -hmm. then I began my work um, as airport manager of Pittsfield Municipal Airport in western Massachusetts. Western part of the state, yeah. Yeah, and then um, I I really liked the idea of coming to Beverly, coming to the North Shore. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really relatively new to the area. I've been here for seven months, um, yeah. though it's a fantastic well, place to be. Well, that was going to be my next question. So yeah. Yeah, it's just, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's a, it's a really great airport, great community. Um, so I I love. I love being here. It's, yeah. it's, it's really good. So you moved from Colorado. That's where you're originally from, Colorado area? I'm actually from New York, and okay. then I moved out to Colorado, out to Colorado for quite yeah. some time, about okay. eight years or so. Okay. Well, that, that's very impressive, and, and thank you for, for that. Now, we're going to uh, talk about the airport a little bit. Let, let's, let's show slide number one here. Uh, our, I'll ask our control room, and that is an overview <coughs> uh, of um, the operation. That's the, that's the, looks like the control tower in the main building there. And um, let's look at slide number number two. And now tell us a little bit about this. The, the, uh, I think it was, what is it, 1941? Uh, was it during the Second World War, I believe, uh, when the airport was actually commissioned or opened? Yeah, so actually, um, the, during, uh, during World War II, a lot of the airports were taken over for the war effort. Yeah. And so um, the, this particular airport, Beverly Regional Airport, was used, it was actually the longest runway in New England at that time. Right. And um, as you can see right right there, we don't have the second runways. We don't have the, the taxiways and a lot right. of the businesses Just and hangars that we have. Just exactly, yeah. 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 Um, and it was formed through the, the Aero Club, which is now no, known as the North Shore Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Um, and then the airport was rededicated back to the city um, of Beverly in 1950. In 1950, and yeah. we've been uh, running it uh, uh, ever since. And let's take a look at slide number three, if I can ask our control. So this is now, this is what you're talking about before. That was just one long runway. And yes. I think here, um, uh, what we see uh, on, on, the, on, the, on the left here, that, that circular driveway, that's part of the Cherry Hill Industrial Complex. And uh, on, the, on the right, the little road on the right is San Fonso Drive. And just, just off the right side of the picture would be Route 97, I believe, that would come in 
kind of at a, at a right angle from the from the right side. So this is this is I, I would take it a, a very recent picture. So this this was actually captured in 2006, and if you can see on the the lower portion of that slide, you actually see some construction going on. Okay. That is the runway. That was an extension project to to bring the runway to what it is currently now, 5,001 feet by 100 wide. And what they're doing um, in that dirt portion, that's a runway safety area. So off of each runway, um, there, there are three-dimensional surfaces. Okay. Um, and so those are used to, in its um, part uh, 77, it's used to control um, basically all, all, the, all, all the surfaces that are above the airport, that sit above the airport in different, in different planes. And so it actually goes out to 10,000 feet around the airport to protect the, the surfaces. Wow. So, and, and, it, and it goes, um, so right above Beverly Regional Airport's airspace is actually Boston. So, um, so we're in very close coordination with, with Boston Center as well for all our arrivals and departures. So, and and uh, so we have two sides of the airports uh, of the airport on the right. That's the east side. So that's where the admin building are. We have right. several other businesses. And then on the west side, we have our fixed base operator. Um, you can kind of see the buildings on the the top right corner. Mm -hmm. um, well, I should say the top top right of the uh, the screen. We have a flight school over there, and then like I said, various other right. other businesses on the airfield. Right. So now uh, the the town or the airport actually. Um, sits in the property lays in three different towns mm -hmm. right tell us about that so we um, the majority of the acreage we have 413 acres the majority of it is within Beverly okay. and then we have arrangements with Danvers and mm -hmm. the town of Wenham as well so three municipalities um, that that's quite a lot for an airport actually yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say but totally on it's not totally rare um, and so we have uh, commissioners from the town of Beverly, Beverly um, residences, and then two from the town of Danvers, and right. then the we have an agreement with Wenham each year that we actually pay them a tax. All right. So, and and this is going to we're going to talk about this a little bit later. This has some implications for some of the uh, new construction and some of the renovations that you're going to mm -hmm. do uh, because you got to get some permissions from the uh, from all the towns. So let's take a look at uh, the next slide, number four, if if I can do. So. Uh, you're, tell us about the, the stakeholders. This is an interesting slide. Tell us about this, uh, Gloria. Yeah, so we have um, we have internal stakeholders as well as external stakeholders. Our external are anyone that's really not involved directly on the airport, I would say. So Federal Aviation Administration, MASTA Aeronautics. Um, internal would be our, our airport tenants and businesses, the, the pilot community, and, and, and anyone that's really involved on um, uh, our tenants, and then um, out external uh, would also be the community, um, and then the other stakeholders, as we just mentioned, is the city of Beverly Dan and Danvers Town and and, and Wenham. All right, and and really, gonna... and yeah, and really, for everything to be succinct, they all have to you know be involved. Yeah. Every single one of those stakeholders. Yeah, and we're gonna. Uh, and uh, in fact, let's see the next slide, please. Uh... And um, so tell us about, it, it's considered a, a reliever. A re tell, tell us about this. This is very interesting. Sure. Yeah. So um, given our close proximity to Boston, we're actually right. only 14 nautical miles north of Boston. Um, yep. That is extreme close proximity. Yep. Um, we are considered a reliever to the Boston traffic. So we are able to accommodate a lot of those larger cat category aircraft, so jet aircraft in particular. Um, so, based on the reliever classification, we're, we're ranked in a, in a priority system when we when we receive grants and when we apply for grants. Um, so that helps us with with our ranking. Yeah, of um, course it would. Yeah, and I'm then see that. and then we're considered a business category aircraft, mostly based on the type and demand of aircraft that are our primary either transient aircraft or based aircraft operators. Yeah. Um, and since we have a, a, a pretty large fleet mix of both small aircraft, single engine, multi-engine, and then you have um, jet, small, medium, and large jet aircraft. Yeah. Um, and then we are anticipate, we, we do clear international flights each year, so we have a facility that can process that. Um, and right now we're, we're clearing about 60 international arri arrivals annually. Really? Mm -hmm. and that, now where would they come from? What, what's all over. Really? <laughs> yeah. In fact, um, just a few months ago, we had a speed record from 
um, England to Beverly. And in order to, comp to make the speed record happen, um, the, the flight did not want to land in Boston because of the traffic, because of the congestion. Yeah, so it landed in Beverly. So it Beverly. landed in Beverly. Yeah. Um, so we are able to process these international flights. Um, so we, we, and like I said, they, they come from all over. Yeah. So right now, it's not Beverly International Airport, but according to the slide, in, to this, in this year, in this fiscal we, year, we are you going to be, be called Beverly International Airport? We, we may be. Um, we're okay. going to go through a forecasting process when we yeah. have, go through the master plan. But um, based on the, the usage and the <coughs> amount that we currently have and, and what we're projecting um, as for some of the aircraft that are going to be based at the aircraft, we are, we are yeah. anticipating that designation. Yeah. And I would imagine just from a layman's standpoint, that would mean being able to clear customs and you'd have to have those kinds of folks here, which mm -hmm. if you w didn't handle international uh, uh, arrivals, you, you wouldn't have right. any and need they, for that. Yeah. yeah, they're at yeah. the airport, so. Yeah, yeah. 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 interesting. Uh, and let's take a look at the, the next uh, slide, if we could. Now, this is uh, some of the routes that you that you fly, or maybe all the routes that you fly. Tell tell us about this, uh, Gloria. So, so this is just a simple graphic. It's a display um, that we can show that it shows that we're not really just a, a, a local airport. Yeah. So when I first came on board here, um, I think it was my first day, and I and I met someone at the Cummings Center, and they said, oh, there's an airport in Beverly? <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and so what am I yeah, getting into? <laughs> right, and so for me, it was, it was you know, somewhat positive and negative, positive that you know, they're not bothered by the noise, negative that the airport's not known. Um, so th this is just a snapshot of, a, of a, um, just one time event. Um, and it, it just shows where some of our flights, um, either uh, the destinations that we have. So this doesn't represent all. It just represents a snapshot in time that we can use to show okay, as a it. graphic that, that we aren't just a, uh, okay. a, a local airport all per right. se. All right. And let's uh, take a look at the next slide, if we could, please. Um, and now, see, this is, um, uh, I was surprised when I saw this slide. Tell us about, this is the, the businesses that are actually on the airport property. And tell us about these businesses, and I believe, as you said to me earlier, that they have to be uh, aeronautically related, is that right, or being in the aeronautical business? Yeah, so these are our, um, the ones on the left side of the screen, screen are the, our aeronautical businesses, um, and a lot of the activity is corporate, commercial, recreational, instructional aircraft. Um, we have maintenance services, um, aircraft rental. We have a very large club. Um, and then we do quite a few med flights um, every week. And then we also have um, news helicopter stations based at the airport. And so um, we're looking at expanding those businesses. And, and, and we have uh, several, actually, in the next few months. So we have a waiting list for for some well, businesses trying to come onto yeah, the airport. And we're, gonna, so. and we're gonna talk a little bit more about that yeah. a little bit later. Now, is, is, uh, have we gone through six or seven slides here? Is, this, uh, is there a slide number seven, or is that, was that it? That was seven, okay. So now let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about, now this, this past December, according to the newspapers I read, um, the, the airport got a, a total of four grants from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, the Aeronautics Division, for roughly about a, a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So, well, before you answer that question, but tell us where does your funding generally come from? How, how are you, how, how are you, where do you get your money for your operations? Sure, so our operations are actually funded through our enterprise fund. So any revenues that we make, we put back into all of our expenses. Um, so anything, personnel, um, supplies, and then our capital projects as well, we used for funding out of our own revenues. So um, our our funds come mostly from land lease and ground lease fees. Um, a huge portion of it is for the aeronautical land leases, right. landing fees, and then fuel flowage are our largest uh, our largest revenue sources. Okay. Um, so everything everything is, it's a revolving account. It, continually goes back into the airport in improvements, capital improvements, right. um, always to make the, always to comply with FAA design standards standards, and um, also for safety and security enha enhancements. Right. Sure. So, um, and then a large portion of our grants comes from MassDOT Aeronautics as well as the Federal Aviation Administration and then they have different priorities on what they will fund. Um, but when you're looking at grant projects for us, really the, the priority goes from runway center line out. Um, so pavement 
projects right, per se. I yeah, really yeah, they get the priority. Yeah, yeah. And then anything else is 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 yeah. really more than just entitlement funding, grant funding. It's it's discretionary yeah. grant funding as now, well. Now, is is uh, typically are do airports like 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 uh, this one? Uh, do they rely on getting grants uh, to supplement their their funding? Is that the typical uh, yeah. across the industry? Across yeah, the, yeah. Abs absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, we are part of the municipality, but some of the um, most airports really do rely on on if they're not an enterprise fund, they really do rely on that municipality to receive the funds. Yeah. Um, like I said, for us, we're a complete enterprise fund. Right. Um, so, so for us, we do still rely on the capital projects that. Um, you know uh, the runway project we're anticipating for the actual runway reconstruction around five or six million dollars yeah. so that's something that you know we save up for years um, in order to put our portion of the sure. the, the amount the, sh the share um, so when you're looking at these multi-million dollar projects um, and in the past um, over about 10 years, w there have been 20 million, and in the next five years, we're projecting another 20 million in, well, in total really funds for up, projects. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, it's always it, it goes back into the airport for safety, security, and design requirements. Yeah, and we'll talk about now. You you are uh, the, the airport is owned by the city, right? It's mm -hmm. uh, now. Are you and any other people in the airport employees of the city? I'm or? an employee of the city as okay. well as staff at the airport. They're employees of the okay. city, um, and and and. Under Mass General Law, we also have a board of county. Uh, I'm sorry, a board of commissioners. Right. Um, and so we have, like I said, representatives from Beverly and from Danvers, um, right. and right now not from Wenham. Right. Okay. Now, so let's get back to the to the to this total about a million dollars in grants that you got mm -hmm. uh, last December. So tell us what what these what the what the grants were for and what you're going to be doing with uh, with the money. Sure. So we were actually very fortunate for Masta Aeronautics to um, be able to receive these grants. Um, you know, I really stressed and pushed the the uh, request for snow removal equipment because for us we don't use chemical um, dry or wet chemical or sanding on the runway um, it's just it's very expensive and then we and we don't have the storage for it so for us we look at the mechanics the mechanical machines in order to right. to keep the, the the runways taxiways pavement areas so we have over two million square feet of pavement that we have to keep um, clear, well. graded, drained, um, and that includes snow removal. Um, so then, if we are, if uh, we always issue what is called a notum, so it's a notice to airmen and women, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, um, on any surface cont contamination, they call it. Really, yeah. it's ice, snow, anything. Um, so if you know, it's if. When you're looking at a road, there may be it may be slick, but when you're looking at a runway, that slickness can turn into major sure, liability. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so for us, the the snow removal equipment is necessary. Mm -hmm. Like I said, because we have to use mechanical means right. to to clear the the runways, and also it helps us with some of the loose aggregate to clear it off, so that anything that could be ingested by an aircraft, yeah. um, we ensure that it's clear, right. um, so that we yeah. we don't have those incidents. Yeah, I, I, I was uh, when we talked a little bit earlier, I was surprised to. Hear hear that, uh, and it would be interesting for our viewers, that there are no chemicals used, no like sodium chloride or calcium chloride, or even sand, nothing like that. It just all has to be mechanically Mechanical. pushed off, off the runway. Right. Uh, it's, and it's a very large expense, um, you know, if you do start looking at those, at those uh, materials. Okay. So for us, it's not really an option right now. So you're gonna you're gonna try to get this big snow plow truck kind of thing, and mm -hmm. then so tell us a little bit more about what what is some of the other monies uh, are going to be used for. Um, so the other the other grant uh, notifications came for a um, a fuel a fuel um, a fuel tank replacement um, to a above storage tank, as well as for perimeter fencing. So we will. Every year, we will most likely always request perimeter fencing, re repairs, replacement, um, because of security enhancements and, like I said, because of our close proximity to Boston, it's it's a very high priority for us. Um, so, you know, back in 2001, they started the funding process for security enhancements. Yep. And fortunately, the fencing is actually um, is actually covered 100% through MassDOT Aeronautics because they recognize the safety and security needs. Um, so they were able to fund camera equipment um, throughout the entire airfield um, and the like I said the fencing will most likely always be on a, a grant request um, because okay. of how much we have linear fencing 
uh, protecting most of the 413 acres. Yeah. Now let's take a look at, at the next slide, um, if we could. Uh, and this is some, uh, this is prior um, improvements. That tell us a bit about what's going on here, uh, Gloria. Sure. So some of these projects here, these were taken more recently. So there's an apron project going on and, and also runway um, crack ceiling. So every year um, we get an, an evaluation. Master Aeronautics um, gives us what is called a pavement condition index value. Um, on these surfaces, so they, it's, it's evaluated up to 100, and right now um, one of our primary runways, uh, 1634, actually has, has a pavement condition value very low, so the, the runway is in a condition in which Masta, well, the FAA and Masta Aeronautics have determined that no further improving yearly um, oh, cracks in paving, yep, it. a complete mm. um, rehabilitation and and uh, eventually a reconstruction is going to be needed. Um, the, as, I, as I said, the, the past projects were about 25 million in, in these safety maintenance projects. Eight million has been invested from our, our businesses on the airfield, so they, some of these are um, private funded. Um, so like some of the aprons, um, they'll, take on, they'll take on the investment because really? they understand the need oh. for these safety maintenance projects for their operators, for their aircraft. And so, right. um, like I said, we have these in our capital planning, um, though, though our, some of our businesses took on yeah. the, the projects as well. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the next slide here, Gloria. And uh, I think this is something you want to talk about. This was done a little bit earlier. This is where you kind of uh, made, uh, this was inside the, the terminal, I believe. Sure. The so, administrative building. Yep. So actually, Masta Aeronautics um, ha is undergoing a terminal administration building, um, either rehab or reconstruction or new complete building. Um, and and Masta Aeronautics has identified several, uh, various communities in which the tourism and economic uh, drivers are really the airport for the community. And so we are identified as part of the first phase for completing this terminal, or I should say administration building. And um, to be able to receive 95% funding is phenomenal when you look at how terminals are funded throughout the rest of the yeah. United States. So for us to be able to participate in this, that's that, that, like I said, it's 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 quite unheard of throughout the rest yeah. of the United States. Now we're gonna let, let's take a look at um, um, slide number eight here, uh, or the next uh, next slide. Oh, that that's that's some of the security stuff. I think we, yeah. we had talked about that. Mm -hmm. let, let's let's move on to the next uh, the next slide if we could, um, and. Um, this is, is a little bit about the, the size of your fleet and so forth. Maybe you could briefly describe that for us, uh, Gloria. Sure. So um, what we're looking at, we have a very, uh, very based aircraft, which means we have uh, large jets, we have smaller jets, we have medium-sized jets, and then um, helicopter uses, uses, and then we have um, quite a lot of smaller aircraft, um, which are either single engine, multi engine, um, but really they're, they're a smaller category of aircraft. Uh, we've had an increase of 8% from last year's total operations, and when we're looking at our total operations increase over four years, we had a 30.2% yeah. increase, which is phenomenal. Yeah, I think the next slide will show that if we could show that. Yeah, so uh, it, 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 some of these numbers are hard to see, but but uh, guide us through that. You the the, sure. the amount of increase in traffic and, la and landings. Sure. So the, the top two graphs were um, were done prior to the numbers that resulted in two in in this past year. Um, the, those are the numbers from 2017. But as you can see, the trending uh, analysis for Beverly Regional Airport is continuing in a pretty dramatic increase, yeah. um, especially when you compare it to the two graphs on the bottom, which are the, the trends nationwide. And you can see a pretty um, steady decrease of, of the type of aircraft that, like I said, that we are seeing an increase in and the rest mm -hmm. of the country um, on the most part is seeing a, um, a decrease in, in either the mm -hmm. users, the type of aircraft, um, and really that general aviation fleet is at a decline. Yeah. Now who, who uses the Beverly Airport? What kind of traffic? Who are the people that fly in and out of Beverly Airport? Uh, we have, um, it's calculated around 400 different companies um, on on a monthly basis, you know, yeah. so we have um, some, well, it's, it's, it's a varied industry. So we have um, 
oil industry and, and different manufacturing. We have some businesses from Cherry Hill. We have, so we have not only based aircraft users, but also, as, a, as a, that previous slide sh has shown, was nationwide users. Um, and some of our smaller aircraft, aircraft training and instructional, those are more from the North Shore area, South of Boston, Boston area, I would say within about a 30 mile radius yeah. um, for some of those smaller aircraft yeah. users. And I know you have, you have other grants and things in the pipeline. Maybe we can take a look at the next slide here. Um, now this shows uh, for the next five years, it looks very robust, very uh, very challenging. Tell us about this, uh, Gloria. Sure, so I actually, when I came on board, I, I really pushed for an airport master plan and to wait to reconstruct the primary runway 1634 um, because I knew of how important it was to gather the recent data and trending analysis of the category of aircraft and current users of the air, the the uh, runway system. And so I pushed for that airport master plan because the last one was conducted in uh, about 20 years ago and it was using um, extremely old data, old data to, yeah. to, ge to okay. generate yeah. the runway and taxiway design. Yeah. So, so that old data was not updated to current data and it really would have changed the entire airport if, if it had not been updated. Um, we, we may have lost some of our businesses, we, may, we would certainly lose our revenues. Um, so I pushed for that airport master plan to, to, to be this year. Um, so that we can get an update and analysis of what the, the, the airport will look like in the next five years. Yeah. Um, so part of that master planning um, effort will go through um, an environmental assessment out of that after, and then any project that, uh, that is identified out of the airport master plan will also be evaluated, so major pa pavement projects. Mm -hmm. Now we have one more slide here before we get to the last one. So uh, this is the, the next. So the, some of the challenge, briefly, because uh, we're running out of time, Gloria, tell, tell us what, what are the challenges that you think that are faced by running an airport like uh, Beverly Sure, airport? so we have, we have some challenges as far as um, some of our, our aeronautical space, even though 413 sounds like a lot of space, it's actually not. Um, so some of the, we have businesses that are actually waiting to, to come on the field once we can be able to accommodate the space requirements that they would be needing. Um, we were, you know, we have wetlands on the field, so some of the design projects also have to go through, through um, any of the environmental impacts and then um, we really need to, we're going to be coming up with um, creative land use development projects for, for all the associated area that we have. So really changing the way the airport looks. Yeah, yeah wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we have one last slide. If, if people want to contact you, and I think there you are, right, in your... Uh, <laughs> your uh, That's not my aircraft, but... <laughs> <laughs> so if, if, uh, if people have more questions as a result of, of seeing you here on uh, North Shore Journal, they can contact you and that number. Now that number there uh, rings in your office at the, at the airport, yes, uh, Gloria? Yes, that's correct. And then there's you, uh, 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 your, your email address and then the, the general um, um, URL there is beverlyairport.com. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And we're actually updating our website, so I'm really excited to have that go online. It's going to be a platform for information for the airport master plan. Really, it's 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 going to be um, it's going to be effective in the outreach that we're going to be doing. Yeah. Well, Gloria Bouillon, <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> for, you for being here me. on North Shore Journal. I, I think our uh, viewers had a, a great education here for those great. who aren't familiar with uh, uh, with the Beverly Airport. And I'd like to invite our viewers to uh, see us next time on North Shore Journal. I'm your host, Walt Kosmowski, and we will see you next time.